In today's video I'm gonna teach you how you can create that animation. So basically we're gonna be creating a mini ad for Adobe After Effects. Even though nobody paid me for this, but I freaking love the software, so I can promote them all the time. With that being said, we're gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. All right, so let me just show you the comp settings. That's how it looks. I'm gonna hit OK. And then I prepared only one asset for today, which is AE logo. I'm gonna scale it down. And the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the rounded rectangle tool, and I'm gonna create a shape that is in the similar size to our AE logo. We can recenter, then we can adjust the roundness. Let's just make it so it looks exactly the same. Then what I'm gonna do is rename it to a logo background. I'm gonna drop it below, and the next thing we want to do is go to picker, and we're gonna grab this color. All right, I'm gonna turn off the visibility for this, and then in our AE logo, I'm gonna apply the effect called extract. Now we need to bump up the black point and that way only the letters will stay. All right, now we can bring back our background. And now what I would like to do here is actually create a controller for both of those. So what I'm gonna do is right click, go to new, no object. I'm gonna rename it to controller. Now I'm gonna select both these layers and I'm gonna parent them to our newly created controller. So that way, whenever we change the position over here, everything will move. So for starters, we want to add some keyframes. So for this, I'm gonna hit P, then I'm gonna hold shift, click S, and also I'm gonna hold shift and click R. Now I'm gonna set a keyframe for all of those. I'm gonna move them to the right and then we're gonna grab X position beyond the screen. Also what I'm gonna do is change the rotation to minus one over here. And as for the scale, I'm actually gonna start the scale from 100 and then over here, we're gonna change it to a smaller value. Okay, so that's how it's looking. Then what we're gonna do is definitely select all the keyframes. We're gonna apply easy ease and then I'm gonna head over to the graph editor. I'm gonna fit the graph and let's just create a peak on the left. All right, way smoother, probably a bit too slow. So we're just gonna squeeze it in. So now our goal is to actually open up that A logo. So the letters go to the left and then we're gonna extend the background. So for this, we need some properties in these two layers. So in logo background, we actually need to keyframe size and also the roundness. Then I'm gonna head over to our A logo over here and we're gonna hit P. We're gonna create a keyframe for position. Let's move forward. And what we're gonna do is drag X position in our logo to the left. Then we're gonna actually adjust the background. So for this, I'm gonna uncheck constraint proportions over here and we're gonna bump up the size just like so. Okay, that's what we have. So I'm gonna take that keyframe for the roundness and align it with the last ones. And then here in the beginning, we're actually gonna start off with kind of a circle. So for this, I'm gonna bump up the value over here. So that way it's gonna be rounded in the beginning and then it's gonna get sharper on the corners. All right, but we obviously need to do the same procedure. So we're gonna select them all. I'm gonna hit F9. Let's go to the graph editor. I'm gonna select them here. Let's squeeze it into the middle. Looks pretty good out pro, I just speed it up a bit. Way better. All right, so now we can open up all the keyframes. We're gonna select the newly created ones and we're just gonna get them backwards. Okay, that's really smooth. And then we're gonna grab the type tool and we're gonna type in the text where edits become art. I'm gonna recenter, then we definitely need to scale it down a bit by changing the font size. I'm gonna recenter again. Maybe it would be a good idea to actually turn on the caps and we're just gonna change the font style to let's say semi bold. Let's recenter again. I'm gonna probably scale it down a bit and here it should be perfect. All right, I'm gonna trim it to this position. We can actually rename it to text. Now what I'm gonna do is add one of the text animations for my pack. You can use literally anything you want. So for this, I'm gonna type in MB and let's go for maybe blink. Let's adjust the timing. Also, one thing I would like to add here is for color gradient. So I'm gonna go for it. And let's just select that effect and we're just gonna squeeze the points to the middle. I just don't like that green color. So we're just gonna go for something maybe more orange. Let's hit okay. And I'm just gonna reorder it. So basically I'm gonna drop the text below the controller. Let's go to the mode and I'm gonna select both these layers and then we're gonna head over to the track mat and we're gonna click on the logo BG. Now we need to turn on the visibility and that way everything here will remain within the frame. Also, we're gonna play around with the colors to make it a bit more appealing. So for this, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add gradient ramp. And here we're gonna pick something in the light blue, something like that maybe. Then I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go to the end color and now we're also gonna go to the blue 
but this time it's gonna be darker. All right, let's hit okay. Then you can always play around with these points to get your desired look, but let's say this should be fine. So now what I'm gonna do is right click, let's go to layer styles and we're gonna pick inner glow. I'm gonna open up the property over here and let's just bump up the size. Also, I'm gonna head over to the color and let's just pick something bluish. All right, light blue should be fine. Let's hit OK. And then we need to head over to our logo background. I'm gonna hit you and we need to get it back to the middle. So we're gonna squeeze it in. And to do so, we need to actually create keyframes. I'm gonna move forward and then we're just gonna squeeze it in like that. So just because we use the track mat, you can notice that everything that is beyond the frame is disappearing. All right, then we're gonna bump up the roundness to achieve a circle. And that's what we have. So now we want to get that bouncy look. So whenever it's getting towards the middle, it's gonna get that bounce. So for this, you need to use the expression from the comment below. So now let's go ahead and alt click the stopwatch over here, and then we're gonna paste the expression. So now it's quite important to actually remove the easy ease. So for this, I'm gonna select these two, and I'm gonna hold control, and I'm gonna click on one of them. All right, let's see now. Now, in my opinion, we should speed it up a bit to make it less stiff and this starts to look pretty cool. Also, as you can notice, we got this text over here. So for this, we need to head over to the text. I'm gonna hit T and we're gonna create a keyframe for opacity. I'm gonna move it backwards and somewhere at this position, we're gonna change it to zero. Okay, pretty cool. By the way, this is the first time I'm gonna be saying that, but pretty soon I'm gonna be releasing the update for Motion Essence. And the upgrade is gonna be pretty huge because we're gonna go from 25 assets to over 130. This took quite a bit of time and also I just wanted to let you know that I'm doubling the price for this. So if you want to have on the best price, get it now and await the update. So every single person that has Motion Essence at this moment is gonna get a free upgrade. Back to the show. And now what we want is create another shape. So for this I'm gonna head over here and let me just grab the rounded rectangle tool and we're gonna create a wand. Okay. I'm gonna recenter and now we need to head over here again and we're gonna pick the star tool. I'm gonna create the shape on top over here. You can change the amount of corners with the scroll wheel, just like so. But something like that should do. Okay, let me just grab it and put it on top. I'm gonna probably adjust the rotation a bit. And this seems to be perfect. All right, as for the rectangle, I'm gonna probably change the color to just see the separation here. Okay, maybe something like that. She looks pretty cool. I'm gonna recenter the whole thing. And we also need to add the expression to our wand. Let me just rename it. We can also parent this to our controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And just to focus on the wand so you don't get confused, I'm gonna solo it out. And we're gonna create a keyframe for position. I'm gonna go back and let's just drag it a bit lower. All right, so that's what we wanted. Now we want to add the exact same expression as we used before. So for this, I'm gonna head over here to our logo BG, contents, rectangle, rectangle path, size, and here it is. I'm gonna copy. Now let's close everything down. I'm gonna go to our position over here and I'm gonna alt click the stopwatch. Let's paste it. And that way we're gonna get that bouncing effect. We could probably get a stronger look by changing the value over here. So I'm gonna bump it up to four. Let's see now. Okay, a bit stronger, we can also squeeze it in. That looks better. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is hit T and I'm gonna create a keyframe for opacity. Now I'll create another one, but this time we're gonna set it to zero. So that's how it's looking. And we're gonna unsolo out this layer. Okay, it's definitely a bit too big. So for this, I'm gonna hit S and we're gonna decrease the scale. We also need to adjust the timing. I feel like it's a bit too early. So for this, I'm gonna offset it a bit. Maybe also adding a little bit of rotation could be pretty cool here. Now what I would like to see is how it looks with the motion blur on. So I'm gonna turn it on over here and let's see now. Actually, also the wand. Just wait for the best part when we're gonna actually turn this animation into a real magical animation. But now what I'm gonna do is actually use one of my presets, which is from Motion Boost. So for this, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename it to Shake. Now I'm gonna pick HHD, which is gonna be Sallow Breeze. One of my favorite ones from the pack. Okay, so this is gonna give us that extra shake, but we need to also adjust the timing. Okay, this is really nice. So now what I'm gonna do here is also at scale. So I'm gonna go to this transform 
and I'm gonna use scale, I'm gonna align it with this keyframe and we're just gonna get closer to our animation. Now I'm gonna select everything, I'm gonna easy ease and I'm gonna head over to graph editor. Now it would probably be best to go to the value graph, I'm gonna fit the graph and we kinda wanna create a sharp movement in the beginning. So let me just extend it so it's better visible and we're gonna do it like that. That actually looks pretty cool with the sharp movement in the beginning. I'm gonna make some adjustments. And now the best part, which is basically creating a new adjustment layer. And then what we're gonna do is rename it to sauce. I'm gonna add posterize. Then let's change the value over here to 12. So this is gonna make it look horrible, but no worries, we're gonna fix it. So the way we fix it is basically use noise effect. We're gonna drop it on top and we're gonna change the value to, let's say 14. All right, as you can notice, it's gone. And then also I'm gonna uncheck use color noise. Now, if you want to sauce it up, you need to use glow. But for this occasion, I'm gonna actually use deep glow, which is a plugin. And then we just need to adjust some settings. It's definitely too intense. All right, okay, let's see now. Okay, looks really nice. I just feel like the timing is a bit off. So for this, I'm gonna actually offset that shake either by one or two frames, let's see. Yeah, actually one frame. That's literally perfect. Also something I'm gonna do is add deep glow to a logo. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. And this is gonna be way too intense. So we're just gonna change it to 0.5 and also we're gonna decrease radius. So before, and after. I probably went overboard with the noise effect, so for this I'm gonna change it to 12, and this should be fine. Also, we can bump up the posterize a bit, 14 maybe. Also, I'm a big fan of turning up the radius all the way to 2000. Also, we're working with 8 bits, so once we change it to 32, that color bending is gonna probably be gone. I'll probably go for one adjustment, which is basically going to our background over here, and then what I'm gonna do is just make it a bit sharper here. Yeah way better. I really like that bounce over here. So once you combine a shake with the bounce expression on the size, and then also like if you have an object over here and you also add bounce to this, this is gonna look fire. And as for the last touch, we're gonna loop this animation. So I'm gonna go to the controller, I'm gonna hit P, I'm gonna create a keyframe, I'm gonna move forward and then we're gonna drag Y position downwards. All right, now also I'm gonna head over to the graph editor and we're just gonna change it to the speed graph and make sure to create a peak in the middle. I made it extremely sharp, so I'm just gonna extend it a bit and then we're gonna close the animation at that point. So this is gonna be pretty cool because it's gonna go down and then it's gonna loop from the left. Probably we could start the animation from this position. Let's make it faster a bit at the end. I just feel like that orange color is a bit too harsh on the eye. So for this, I'm gonna head over here. Let's just figure out something else. So we probably have to go to the color one and here something blue should be fine. Let's hit okay and adjust some points. So yeah, it's all up to you what you prefer. I feel like this could look pretty good. This is a pro tip, probably an extra touch here would be changing the font style over here. So I'm just gonna go here and change it to black and that way in my opinion looks more minimalistic and if you try to use 60 fps for this animation this is gonna look so smooth but i'm recording the tutorial in 30 so you won't be able to see that if i change it here so here we have the final result hopefully you learned something new in today's tutorial and yeah without further ado i'm gonna wrap it up here and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys and by the way make sure to check out that video over here